Hey everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be adding a Stripe payment to our application so we can take the monies from our users. So, first of all, right click on your uh, UI layer and uh, let's manage Nugget packages. Click on Browse, type in Stripe, and what you want to choose is Stripe.net and install. Okay, once Stripe is installed, let's head over to our app settings.json. In here, let's make a section called Stripe. And what we want to store here is our publishable key, the one that uh, we can expose to the outside world, and the secret key, which is going to be stored on our backend. And uh, we're going to be using, and basically, encryption magic is used to use the secret key to decrypt anything encrypted with the publishable key. Uh, let's make these properties. Publishable key. Or rather, public key. Let's leave it empty for now. And let's call it secret key. Okay, so I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the description. Uh, you will need to sign up for Stripe in order to use it, as well as uh, the link where you get your publishable key and secret key. It will be located in your dashboards, I will, and we'll be using uh, this element. Every, uh, Stripe basically did all the heavy lifting for you, you literally just copy paste from their site. I'm just going to show you how you go about doing this. So I'm going to omit the part where I add my secret key as I don't want to show it to you. So just take note that I'm going to add the publishable key to the public key and the secret key to the secret key section. Okay, so once you have added your keys to appsettings.json, head on over to your startup file. Now, following uh, this documentation, uh, they literally describe it how to add it for .NET Core. Uh, let's just go ahead and copy uh, this line here, where we want to configure our uh, Stripe with the secret key. So let's add this here after our sessions. And configuration, what we want to do is replace that with our config. Make sure we're using Stripe. And there we go. Okay, so now that Stripe is, Stripe secret key is registered on our backend in our, our middleware, let's go ahead and make the checkout form. Let's go to our pages, checkout, let's go to our payment section. And in here, let's make a div for now. And this is where we're going to put our checkout form. So. Let's just grab this uh, HTML, put it here. At the bottom, let's make our section scripts. And let's put Stripe here. Okay, now that we have our Stripe uh, scripts here, let's quickly roll into our site.css. Let's take the CSS here and let's just copy this. I will also leave a link in the description for a site where they explain how you can customize your um, checkout experience to tailor it to your site. Uh, this is not part of really this tutorial section where I show you how to customize it. I just want to get you set up and then you take your own journey to extend it the way you want it. Okay, so um, now we have this, and uh, we need the JavaScript as well. And as you can see, the JavaScript will be using our public key. So let's take all of this JavaScript. And after Stripe over here, let's add a script tag. And let's put all of our JavaScript here. 
Now let's remove the public key here. Okay, let's open our payment and let's make a constructor where we are gonna inject our configuration. And let's not put this in our get method. Um, okay. So let's make a property and we will call it public key. Okay. And we're going to get it from our config. We're going to go to Stripe public key dot to string. And mm, we want to generate the variable. And there we go. So now we got our public key here. Uh, let's use MVC to go to our model and get the public key here. And we can inject it this way. Uh, and let's put it in single quotes. One thing though, in our form we want to remove the charge and uh, just the whole action thing from here uh, since we're just going to be posting the payment form to our payment class now another thing they provide us with is a checkout controller uh, um, functionality as well so nice and easy let's copy the parameters Base, uh, let's make actually a new public I action result on post. And uh, let's paste our parameters here. Let's return page for now. And actually, let's do redirect to page slash index. And would that be a valid page? Yeah, that will be all right. And let's just copy all of this stuff as well. Paste it in here. Let's make sure we are using Stripe. Okay, let's put a breakpoint here and let's launch our application. See what happens. Okay, let's add something to our cart. Let's go to check out payment. We're going to customer information. Uh, fill out this really ugly form. Submit it. One's an email. A There we go. Now you see, we got this really nice element which we can use. Uh, in the documentation, they actually tell you that you can use this uh, number to test your payments. So let's do just that. 42424242424242. And just fill out the same as well. And submit payment. So you can see the email is null. We didn't really uh, capture any of that. We don't need to. And we have a Stripe token. So what happens in the background? is important to understand of why stripe is so good is it will you will the payment form that you've just submitted it never reaches your server backend so you never find out what actual credit card information your user has so when you capture and the uh, capture this information here and submit it the stripe script will send it to their services they will process this information. They will create a token. And this is the token that is submitted to your own post, right? So this token is now just a link to a payment that the customer has submitted. So now you basically are creating a customer reference here. It's all just a bunch of information. And then you create a charge as well. All right. And then redirect to payment. Okay, 
Now, if I go to my dashboard and I look at payments, you can see this uh, information here about this payment that was just made. 